How's it going everyone? Welcome to Art and Design. My name is Thorgeir and today I'm going to be taking a look at the iPad Pro 2020 and seeing if it's worth upgrading from the 2018 model and maybe if some of you uh, should upgrade from an older version of the iPad. Anyways, let's dive right into it. Apple just released this uh, iPad Pro into the wild uh, sort of quietly on the internet. They didn't really do a major announcement like they're used to doing, but I'm curious to see if this iPad is something that I should be upgrading to. So I have the 2018 version right here and it's fantastic. It's really quick. I can't complain at all in any way about it. And seeing that they made an upgrade, I'm curious, like, is there anything in this upgrade that makes this a better art or drawing experience? Let's take a look at it. All right, so on the Apple website right here, Apple iPad Pro, um, we have this absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous website. If we start scrolling down, we can see just, uh, Apple knows how to make websites. So iPad Pro, your next computer is not a computer. It's a magical piece of glass. It's so fast that most PC laptops can't catch up. It has pro cameras that can transform reality and you can use it with touch, pencil, keyboard, and now a trackpad. It's the new iPad Pro. As we can see from the picture right here, it has this keyboard case, which from where I'm looking at it, looks a little bit too steep to draw on. But yeah, this might be a little bit uncomfortable drawing on this, but we'll see. Moving on, liquid retina technology. Okay, so this is the display on the new iPad. Interested leading color accuracy, pro motion, 600 nits brightness, ultra low reflectivity, true tone, P3 white color gamut. So all of these things are pretty much identical to the older iPad. So taking a look at 9 to 5 Mac, we have a comparison between the new and the old one, and they're pretty much absolutely identical. So there doesn't seem to be anything new with the screen. So let's move on and take a look at the cameras. So apparently there are new cameras, a 12 megapixel wide camera and a 10 pixel ultra wide camera. So we got a wide angle lens and a normal lens sort of. And then on top of this, we have a LiDAR which should help with augmented reality apps. So if you wanna scan your environment and create 3D animations on your desk, or maybe if you wanna hang up a picture on the wall, you can just point it at the wall and just hang the picture there. Might be some uh, use cases there for apps like Procreate, uh, where you can tap a button, point it at the wall and see how your artwork looks on the wall. That'd be nice. That would be really nice if Procreate implemented something like that. That would be really interesting to see. But I don't really take pictures on my iPad. I use my phone or my camera to do that. So not really a selling point for me. Let's move on. So here we see sort of the marketing material for the LiDAR. Should enable more augmented reality experiences. Performance faster than you can say PC. Hmm, all right. So we don't really have much information about this specific chip, the A12Z Bionic chip. Um, supposedly it's quicker than the predecessor, Obviously, they always make it quicker. It's an eight core graphics processor, yada, yada, yada. I mean, we know it's gonna be quicker. Is that a good enough reason to upgrade? Well, maybe if you have the older version of the iPad, like the first generation, it might be worth upgrading to this one because when I was doing any graphic intensive work, like doing vector art or something like that, the iPad tended to slow down a little bit and get a little bit choppy. So there's definitely a benefit of having a faster iPad. Uh, it's just that I don't really see a reason for upgrading from the previous iPad to this one, just to get a little bit extra horsepower. Here's the magic keyboard. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Floating design. So you can charge it on the side over there. Hopefully the keyboard will be nice. Um, and they have a trackpad. That's nice. And obviously with a trackpad, you can now interact with the iPad like a computer so you can point at things with the trackpad open things and so it should be more like a laptop experience here we go just for artists and students and everyone else the apple pencil will we get a new apple pencil will it be much better is it absolutely worth upgrading because of the apple pencil well let's see if the apple pencil has changed no it's the same apple pencil same screen, same Apple Pencil, faster processor, a new case, 
a LiDAR. <sighs> okay, so it doesn't make sense for me to invest in this. Well, let's check how, how much it costs. So let's click order. If we pick 12 inch space gray, 256 gigabytes storage. All right, so the iPad itself costs $1,100. How much does the keyboard cost? $350. So that's around $1,400, $1,400 for the iPad and a keyboard. I would definitely say like if you have the oldest version of the iPad Pro, the first generation with the first generation Apple Pencil and you're doing any graphically intensive work, maybe you're using the newest Procreate uh, brushes and you find them to be a little bit choppy, like when you're drawing something and they might sort of stutter might be worth upgrading uh, if you're doing any vector work like I was doing with uh, Affinity Designer uh, it might be also worth upgrading because uh, Affinity Designer tended to stutter a lot yeah, with the oldest version of the iPad Pro but let me know what you think what iPads do you have and are you going to upgrade to this leave a comment down below and let me know anyways if you want to see more art and design related stuff and go ahead and click that subscribe button like this video if this was helpful just wanted to sort of cover this because uh, I didn't really see a lot of people talking about this. So yeah, anyways, stay safe, have a great day. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.